But um, yeah, I wanted to just make some fun slides because I feel like you get to the end of the month and you're like, oh, like I feel like I've been doing all this or like I've totally not done anything. And you, we get hard on ourselves. You know, I, I feel it in our team page because everybody's kind of quiet. And I'm like, come on, guys. It's not just me here. Because it's like you have to build a momentum together. Um, do you, did you get your girl boss uh, or girl code book? You're in the group, right? I am. Um, I couldn't find it at Barnes & Noble. That's right. You're getting it from your mom this week. Yes. Yes. I'll see her on Saturday because it was supposed to be delivered tomorrow and I'm leaving tomorrow. Perfect. Well, it is a great read already. Like, I... I just think it will be super helpful in getting your mindset back to a good place and not just like motivational words, but really stuff that truly relates to what we are doing as women entrepreneurs. So it, it's spoken to me and I've only read the 10 minutes this morning. So I think you'll really love it. But um, yeah, so let's share my slides. Um, I just made kind of funny stuff on the whim so you can laugh at me and I'm not going to mute you. Um, so I think, you know, obviously I can only speak from personal experience, but I think over the past two years, like I've really had to continuously remind myself that it's about connections and it's about people. And yes, we have scripts and we have um, guidelines for you to kind of work off of, which I highly recommend. Like if you're not seeing success, like literally just go back to the scripts because I use them all the time. Um, but I think the hardest part for most of our team is, okay, I'm doing a lot of small talk and I'm sick of doing that. How do I make that transition? Or um, they're liking and seeing all of my stuff, but I'm not quite sure how to invite them. Like we're talking about it, but I haven't thrown the invite or like, what does that kind of look like? So I wanted to go back to this culture of connection because I did something yesterday that I guess it's just how I am. And the question in the um, Girl Code uh, personal development group this morning was, what do you love most about yourself? And I think that I'm a big giver and that's why I want this so bad for you guys and why I try to share really transparently of what I'm doing because it's not a secret. Um, and I've learned through sitting down with a lot of you like, okay, everybody works differently and I have to remember to adapt to that. But something I did yesterday, it's really about the small things. So yesterday I realized that I had a bunch of friends that have lost their dad and I made sure to message every single one of them and just say like, hey, I'm thinking of you. Um, I know this is probably a hard day for you. I don't know why I thought of it, but that's just like how I work. I think of the small little things because those are the things that I like to, to get. Um, and so when you kind of think about this business that way, like what deep down inside do I want from people? Um, you know, is it attention? Is it loyalty? Is it likes on my posts? Is it recognition? So when you kind of think about it that way and give more of that, it's going to be a lot easier. Um, so like I said, I like to do the small things. I like to send you guys notes when you don't expect it. I like to give gifts. Like I'm just a giver and that's just my nature. Um, and obviously I like to receive it, but if you give more, obviously at a certain point it comes back around and I truly believe in good karma. And that's kind of where I came up with this culture of connection topic. So, um, each slide's going to have like a quote or most of them are funny after this, but I love this quote, like be the girl who smiles, put it politely when people look at her. Be the girl that says the positive thing when everybody else is complaining. Be the girl that gives advice from the heart. Be the girl that tips generously. Be that girl. Because there's not enough of that in this world. And people appreciate and trust you more when you are that girl. And that's kind of been my experience, which is probably why you're on here tonight. So um, not to toot my own horn or anything, but... So let's talk about this connection. Um, so I like to start off with don't be a creeper, right? Um, like I said, I want to keep it fun and likes. I think we all need it at the end of the month. And it's Monday night at 8.30. And some people told me they're watching The Bachelorette instead of getting on a team call. So people will tell you you can't do it all the time. Um, I've shared a lot of my failures with you guys 
I think especially when you go home and you see your family and maybe that happens past weekend, um, people are like, what is all these posts? And what are you sharing your life about? Um, but I think you have to just come up with a line in your head of exactly what you're doing and not just mass message, not just, um, you know, I talk to people every day. I don't know. So I think not looking at yourself as a creeper that way, but being confident in what you're doing and knowing that you're there for the connection and the friendship. Um, It's funny because we tried to post it today, a Shakeology thing. One of the simple quotes I love is empowered, empowered women, empower women. And I just, it's so strong. And I love that because that's really what I think all of us, our niche is women. And we want to create those connections and reach out to people and, create those friendships. But like anything, you know, dating somebody or finding new friends is hard this age. So you have to be willing to double your rate of failure. You probably are going to seem like a creeper at some points because that's just how people are skeptics and they just think that. But you kind of have to laugh like Leo, you know, just accept that you're going to go for it and you're going to try new ways to reach out to people. Maybe it's finding a group in your new area, Martha, of people that love to personal train or love to, I'm sure there's running clubs. I don't know, something you're going, can you, can you hear me? It's yeah. unstable. Okay. Tell me if I'm freezing. But I think especially for you, it's exciting because you're tapping into a new area. And so it's a huge opportunity for you to find new niches and new places to meet people and just get out and who cares? Talk about it. Um, Your push-up thing was awesome. I think it created consistency. It created relatability and it showed people that you're not going to give up. So I know you and doubling your rate of failure is only going to double your rate of success. It's just a matter of when and how long you're going to stick it out. So when people laugh at you, laugh right back. So the second thing is, like I said, find people like you. Um, When I go and friend request people, I don't just friend request anybody. I truly go on their page and just scroll through. It doesn't take more than a minute, but I look at them and say, would I be friends with them in real life? And maybe that's a little bit judgmental, but I look at like, you know, what kind of posts are they putting up? If they're posting drinking pictures all day, that's just really not my style. If they are, have tattoos and piercings all over them, that's just not me. Maybe that connects to somebody else and that's okay. But I think when you put your true self out there in your own post, you're going to find more people like you. And when you do friend request them, they're going to say yes, because they're going to see, Oh, this girl is just like me the same way how you found them. So think about where do you go to shop for a dress for Easter or, you know, what stores do you go to for your makeup or, um, you know, besides health and fitness, what are the other things that you like? Something that um, Jess, one of my new coaches brought up is she actually went on Bumble and you probably don't know what this is, but it's a, everybody thinks it's a dating app, but it's actually um, a way to find people in your area. If you go to Bumble BFF and just tell your fiance, I'm really just trying to find friends, not find guys. (laughs) But um, I've been trying to do it in Atlanta and I found a lot of cool girls on there, but I like haven't figured out how to talk to them yet. So I still have to figure that out. But I thought that that was such a cool idea. And she actually went and met up with girls in Boston because she was new to the city and didn't know anybody. And she said they were super cool. And she went like rock climbing with them and she's going to talk to them about it. So those, I think finding those things and just putting yourself out there, um, not only just in Facebook, but especially, like I said, for you going to a new city, I think that would be so so awesome. You never know who you're going to meet and who cares if you don't like them and you don't have to date them again. Right. Um, but you know, find the weird people like you embrace your weirdness and put it out there because that's when you attract who you are. Um, so, you know, I share my family cause that's really important to me. Um, I haven't shared a lot lately cause I'm a big football girl. So that doesn't really work this time of year, but I, in the fall, I'm like all about tailgating foods, healthy, um, you know, where I'm going to tailgate, whatever. 
those are the things that I share. I travel a lot, so I actually have a big travel announcement coming up. Those are the things that speak to me. So you have to you have to constantly go, like evaluate your posts and make sure what you're putting out is what you want to attract. Um, and I have to constantly check myself on that as well because I'm like, well, Noelle, what am I putting up today? Like, what? She's like, you're looking like it's a lot of beach body. So then I need to retract and kind of speak from, you know, what has happened in my life in the past and what I've struggled with or, you know, whatever, you know, you just got to kind of dig deep and think about that. Um, but find people like you. So something that's helped me a lot is making Facebook lists um, on my Facebook and you can just Google how to do it. But I have a list of prospective challengers and, pers and my like dream team coaches. So we talked about like, think about what you want in a relationship. So you have to give more of what you want to get. And most of us want more attention. We want more likes. We want more comments. We want more people to answer our messages. So give more of that make those lists for yourself of the people that you are talking to and make it part of your power hour to go just to those lists, not scroll your newsfeed and comment and like, and interact on those people's posts and what they're doing. Cause it will bring up all their recent stuff from the past day or two. So that's a good way to kind of not distract yourself, but truly build the relationships with the people that you're talking to. And, um, you know, relate to them, show them that you care and you're interested in their life and what they're doing, not just in a personal message. But I think it's important to kind of do this even before you message them because they already know that you're cool and you're normal and you're not weird. Um, and then, like we said, give, 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 right? So that's why we kind of do the team free clean eating group at the beginning of each month. That's an easy thing that you can literally give to anybody and everybody, especially in the summer. Like, it boggles my mind when I don't see this team inviting at least 20 people to that because it's free. Who cares? The worst that happens is they get a recipe and they never post anything. At least they saw what you did and you planted a seed so that in three to six months when they are feeling crappy and when they want to give up and when they have no support system, they're going to come back to you because they're going to say, Martha gave me that and expected nothing in return. So that's why we do them every day. And then think of your posting as you're inviting. You know, I think a lot of us struggle with inviting because I struggled with it. So usually what you are, what you attract. So I'm that weirdo upside down over there. And we all are part of that. But I have tried to be better about literally finding ways to um, create curiosity about what I'm doing. So not name dropping the 21 day fix, not saying Shakeology pretty much ever in my posts because I want to create curiosity and I want to lure people in to what I'm doing and make them follow my journey day in and day out and see that I show up and see what I'm doing, give recipes, share how you meal prep. Like this week, I made a video of unpacking my groceries and shared exactly what I bought because most people don't know that. They don't know what to buy. Um, next weekend, I'm going to give my grocery list totally free. Like I'm not expecting anything in return, but literally most people think meal prepping and meal planning is this huge, big, scary thing. And it's not. So it's doing two things. It's creating curiosity, really three things. It's being a giver and it's showing people it's not hard. I'm overcoming an objection that people tell me I don't have time and it's hard. Well, no, it's not. And here you go. It's free. So that's, kind of building your relationship publicly and personally. So we talk about messaging as building a connection. And while that's a big part of it, you also can be doing these little things incorporating into your power hour that are going to explode your business because it has helped me a lot in reaching people that I don't know. So like you said, you're talking to somebody you don't know and they're just pulling teeth. Usually what I do with those conversations is I let it be and I go and give them a lot of love on their Facebook posts. Like I literally add them to a list and I check into it every day and maybe they don't post every day, but at least once a week I go through their Facebook and like and comment on stuff because 
Think about it. If we want likes and comments, everybody does. It's Facebook's like middle school. Everybody wants to be in the cool club. That's just, it's horrible that, you know, you feel, oh, I only got five likes. I'm not cool. No, that's not about it. But give more of what you want is basically what I'm getting at. If I haven't said that enough. And be the weirdo. Share, share who you are. So then let's talk about the invite. Um, we all make this so, 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 so much harder than it has to be. Um, I was talking with Tara this weekend and we literally just went through her posts and all the people that liked her comment, we went and started a conversation with them simply by just saying, thanks so much for liking my post. It really means a lot to me. And then this invite. I was getting together my next challenge group or accountability group or whatever you want to call it, summer strong group, um, you know, summer slim down, whatever you want to go after. And I thought of you. That line, I thought of you, has been gold because people like to be thought of. You know, if somebody told me, Danielle, I thought of you for this, like, I'd be like, oh, really? Like, why did you think of me? Right? You know? And ask them, would you be interested? Have you ever thought about being a coach? Have you ever thought about, you know, joining a group? Maybe you've seen some of my posts. And then you drop a big old compliment. So I thought of you as going to be one compliment. And then you're going to make it personal with a compliment below. Because, again, you're giving what you want. Everybody loves to hear, I love your dress today. It's so cute. Um, those shoes are so awesome. Where did you get them? your haircut is so great. Where did you get a cut? Like those are the things that we thrive off of. It's the little, little things here, little things, nothing new that I haven't already said, but everybody wants to be in. Everybody wants to be invited. And this is kind of important. The next step. I think a lot of us get excited when we invite and they say yes, or maybe, and we just word bomb tons of stuff on them. I'm sure, I'm sure you've done it. I've done it plenty of times. It happens because we're excited and we know that this works and we want it to work so bad for them. But this is the moment where you have to take a step back from your computer screen and just say, hold up. Maybe I need to walk away for five minutes. The message will still be there. And you literally, the next two messages you send them are all questions. What are your fitness goals? Can you tell me a little bit about your daily schedule? What interests you about this? Um, where are you struggling most? Do you love your current job is a great one after you do a co coaching invite because most 20 somethings do not. There's something about their job. They wish they had more freedom. They wish they had more time. They wish they had more responsibility. They wish they had more leadership. I guarantee you, you'll get something out of that. But this is the time where you remember that you have two ears, and one mouth. So you got to do a lot of listening and a lot of asking. Um, because again, it goes back to the minion. I hate when I plan a conversation in my head and the other person doesn't follow the damn script. Well, sometimes they're going to tell you the next slide I'm going to go to. Are you ready for it? Are you still ready? I'm good. You know what's coming. Expect a no, right? They're probably going to say no. So why don't we just get over ourselves and stop fearing it, but actually welcome it? Because no always means not right now. Remember we talked about doubling our failure, going for it, going balls to the wall and just inviting anyways. If you're having a conversation, like we talked about five, six, seven messages back and forth, it's time to say, hey, I'm throwing this together. Would this interest you? Because even if you haven't talked about health and fitness, it opens the door for you to share more about what you're doing and ask them questions about where they're struggling. Because if they're having a conversation with you, most likely they're already following you on your posts. Um, and I love, Amy Silverman has a video, um, make $800 off of 50 no's. And it's literally just going for the kill, going in and inviting as much as you can. Of course, you know, to people that you have built relationships with, but a no to me is planting a seed and it's building my farm for the next two, three months of my business. So everything that I'm doing now, the people that I sign up this month didn't start this month. They started two, three months prior. 
for new coaches, I think it's, um, sometimes easier depending on what you've shared previously or like what connections and friendships you've had previously because people are instantly interested in something new but I hear no more than I see here yes and that may not appear in my success club points to all of you guys but I do I hear no 80% of the time but it's literally I know it's building my farm for July for August and September the work that I do now so it goes back to somebody has to hear or ask something four to five times before you get a yes out of them. And I always like to say, how long did it take for you to say yes? And when you think about that, that's what the person that you are looking for is going to take. And so you have to be willing to just go for it and expect the no and not get scared and disappointed when you hear it because you're going to hear it. Everybody does. So let's keep moving. So what the heck do you do now? I hear no's, I get down on myself, um, I don't know where to continue, I just say, okay, bye. No, you ask them, um, you know, would you be interested, not would you be interested, um, would you be open to me following up with you next month about future groups is a good one that I like to use. And you have to have a, a tracking system in play to keep them moving do you what are you using pen and pens pen and paper martha or excel or what i use streak oh okay so you know it's it's a godsend right um, oh it's amazing and keeping up with where people are in the process and i have a not right now tab i don't know if you have one built in but that's really helpful for me to know um who to pinpoint to come back to in july I go through every them, every single one of them every month and I ask them again because I know nine times out of 10, the people that I sign up now, I've asked before and have said no. So those are the people that are going to sit back and watch you and wonder what the heck you're doing and it just has to be the right time. But you want to continue to build that friendship. You keep them on your Facebook list and you go in and comment and like every now and then and you show them love. And then the other thing I like to ask is... Um, could you tell me what's holding you back or what's stopping you from beginning now so that you get an objection out of them if you haven't already? And I literally make a list of those objections I get in my conversations and use them as gifts in my post. Like, I don't know if you noticed this weekend, but I did two live videos in a row, which I really think is a big no-no. But I did it because I was so fired up about hearing people say no to Shakeology I literally got five people within 20 minutes said, I want to do the fix, but no Shakeology. And I said, screw this. I'm going on my video and I'm going to post about it because I was fired up and I wanted to speak from the heart and share my story again, because I think you can never share your story enough. I mean, remember only five to 10% of your friends, see your posts, right? So I'm going to continuously share my story in a little bit different ways each time over and over and over and over again. Because at some point, it's going to connect with somebody in a different way. And sure enough, two of those people that told me no to Shakeology came back and said, I saw your post. Um, I want to sign up. That's, how, that's why I'm saying post your objections. Because it makes you transparent. It makes you real. And it makes you relatable. Like, I did think that Shakeology was expensive. But I also knew how expensive my allergy shots were. So $600 quarterly or $300 quarterly? I don't know. Now it doesn't really matter because I never pay for it. So you pick your poison, you know? But be the Ethel, you know? Be the Ethel to the Lucy and don't give up on people just because they said no. That's your reason to continue building them up and loving on them. So how do we get conversation wins? Um, I just love this meme, so I put it on here because I thought it was a good one. You have to kind of be the encourager. So like we said, go back to having two ears and one mouth. Listen more. Um, the golden rule of all conversations should always be every response is two sentences, one question. Never word wrong. The only time you send more than that is explaining the price of the 21-day fix, the script we have for our team and explaining um, what a VIP customer is. Both those scripts, I think, are a little bit more than that. 
but you should have already gone through so many questions that they are like, yes, ready, sign me up. Um, I think it's also important to check yourself in your conversations to be interested in them, not interesting. Because people will ask, like, how are you? What are you doing? Um, you know, what's going on with work? I literally almost ignore those questions. And it may seem rude at first, but I literally just keep asking questions about the other person. I'll, like, I'll tell them, yeah, I'm working full-time in architecture and I have my own business, which has been awesome. But then I go ask them two questions. Like, it's really, really short. Because it's not about me. I already share so much of my life on Facebook in my posts that people already know what I'm doing on the regular. I don't need to share more of that um, in my messages. Something that I helped Tara overcome objections. This is a great one and we haven't talked about it in a long, long time is to relate to people. So if people say, um, you know, Shakeology is too expensive, right? I, I just can't afford it. You're going to use, I feel, I felt, I found in every single response you have because it's going to help you relate to them. So you can say, um, I feel that Shakeology has truly changed my life because, um, you know, I feel more energized. I have lost X amount of weight and I am finally on a structured routine for the long term. I felt that it was super expensive before I started it as well. But I found that when I broke down the cost, it was only $4 a day. I figured why not try it for a month? Nothing else was working. And it turns out it was the best decision of my life. You know, what's truly holding you back? Is it the cost or is it that you're just unsure about Shakeology? Because most of the time, sometimes there you have to get a little bit deeper because people's mindset might not be in a place where they feel they can actually do it and they can take it on. So when I get to the point I use that line, I, I really get deep with them and I say like, you know, well, what's going on with your workouts? Why haven't you succeeded in the past? Why um, are you at a place ready to make a change? That's another good one. Because then you allow them to kind of open up to their why of wanting to start this. So I don't really accept excuses in my messages. Um, like I said, that's where I get deep and raw. If people are giving me a cost objection, it's usually because I haven't built the value. I don't know what they're eating on the regular. Um, I haven't found a way to fit it into their schedule and I need to get deeper on that. Um, another excuse, I don't have time. That's bullshit. There's 22 minute hardcore and everybody can find 22 minutes. Tell me your daily schedule, let's fit it in. Um, what other excuses have you been getting, Martha? Uh, a lot of it's just been the money. Mm -hmm. or I'm just not interested. One person said she can go to CVS and buy all this protein shakes for $5. And why should she spend that money? I've gotten that a couple of times of like, I could just go to Costco and buy a protein shake and not buy Shakeology. It's cheaper. So you need to do a live video this week. And the title is going to be, um, why I don't buy, why I don't go to CVS and buy a $5 protein shake. And I guarantee, I, it sounds hilarious, but it will get people's attention and you can speak to the heart on what Shakeology has done for you. Because if you're getting it over and over again, that usually means A, you're not talking about it in your posts and B, they don't see the value. Like you have to continuously show why it's a lifestyle shift. Um, I don't, I really haven't gotten many objections on the price. I think because I, at least once a week, I'm talking about Shakeology or I'm sharing a recipe or I'm sharing my story or one of your guys' stories. Um, Cause I think when you can show it's not just you as well, like don't be afraid to use other stories from our team. There's definitely, or like ask on the team page, Hey, what Shakeology stories do you guys have? Or in our challenge group, um, you know, what has been your success story with Shakeology? Because that is how you show it's not just a fad. Like that's what I was getting. It's a fad. No, it's definitely not a fad. <laughs> There's a reason that everybody's doing it because it actually works. So um, 
I challenge you to get on and, and talk about it and talk about it with passion because I know it has changed your life and you want people to feel that passion and get excited about it. Whether you have to put on a pump up jam before and just go balls to the wall, um, do it. I know you love your workout videos, so mix it up and talk more about that and what you're hearing in your messages because you, I guarantee you won't hear any more of it when you start talking about it. Um, and then lastly, be a friend, you know, cheer them on, find ways to recognize them and lift them up and support them. Even if they're on like a different health and fitness journey, because you know, as well as I do, most people don't get the support they need. So they're going to come around when they see you continuously supporting them. All right. Well, last one. So there's still 10 days left in June, right? And there's still plenty of time to share conversations and for us to help you work through like those excuses that you're getting. Um, but you just have to make the decision that what you want and how much you're willing to put in to get it. Um, I think that we don't share conversations enough in our team. And that's something that I want to change because usually you guys are like, Oh, that's it. I'm like, yeah, that's really it. It's really, we make it more um, complicated in our head than we think it has to be. So you're really the only person that stands between you and what you want. And, you know, I think you just have to be willing to change it up and try new things and um, it, it will come. So that's kind of all I have. What else are you kind of struggling with? I know time has been a crunch for you lately and big life changes and that's totally understandable, but what else can I kind of help you um, overcome? Like, what are you struggling with? Well, I think the biggest thing was if conversations weren't going anywhere, mm -hmm. then like taking a step back, but then going to their page. Because mm -hmm. I even had the one girl I was telling you about that I feel like pulling teeth just trying to talk to her. She actually started up another conversation last night about the convention that we're both going to and just asking me questions about it because she'd never been. Mm -hmm. So it was nice because now we were talking about something different. So I feel like I could probably go back, like you said, um, to other people and um, talk with them more on their page or like things on their page and make comments and just because I that's personally what I like. And I like to see that on my posts. And like you said, give more. Mm -hmm. And I want to help, you know, help other people with the things they're going through and just be a little more active on Facebook to other people, not personally myself. Yeah. And I think if you make those lists, it will make it more focused for you so that it's not, um, just kind of a free for all and scrolling type of thing. Um, cause I know I'm really bad at that if I don't do that. Um, the other thing I was going to say is if you feel like you're not getting anywhere with conversations. What I have to force myself to do is literally just say, okay, I'm going to go send 20 people a message and just, make my momentum happen because these people aren't giving it to me right now. So I'm literally going to up my ante and put 20 new box to message, 20 new messages in my inbox. And it can literally just be, um, I actually exported my Facebook friend list and I usually do this once a month and it puts it in a web browser for you. And it's just a list of names. And so I just go down one by one, go to their page, look at something. Oh, I like their cute dog post. Hey girl, how are you? Um, did you get a new puppy that's so cute? Like what's your plans for summer? And I literally just send 20 messages like that just to get some momentum moving because I control that. You know what I mean? And it may seem like a lot, but really when you stop thinking and you just have a list and you go down it, you just go for it. And that's you creating your own momentum. And I always do that when I feel like, oh, no one's answering me. I'm getting nowhere. This isn't moving. I'm not doing well. I have no one to invite. You make your own momentum. But sometimes, like I get sick of making lists sometimes. Um, like I'll make a list at the beginning of each month of 10 people that I want to sign up this month. Like I know it's a pretty short chance of I've had enough conversation with them, I've invited them before, maybe they're thinking about it, or I'm ready to invite them type of thing. And when I visually put, like I put it up by my computer screen, and so it's there every day. And I've done this for the past two or three months, and I'd say at least half of them I sign up. Because it's put in your mind 
that I'm going to do this and I believe in myself and I want to help those people. Um, so those are kind of some things that, like I said, it may sound weird, but it really works because it's just kind of visualizing in your head that you are capable and they need your help. Um, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Um, it's kind of like the vision board, you know, you're envisioning the people. I, I don't care what they tell me. I don't like, I literally, I'm just like, they're going to be the ones I'm signing up this month. And usually about half of them I've gotten because I just, it's just not a negotiable, like they're signing up. <laughs> what else? Not, I mean, not a whole lot. I've not been as active as I wanted to be this June. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but now this is kind of the kick in the butt to keep going. Yeah. And like I said, you control how much you put in and we're going to be here to support you. And I think June, end of June into July, going up to summit is going to be a huge, huge month for our team with a lot of excitement. Um, and if you haven't heard me say it enough yet, be at summit next year, but it literally, you guys are going to see me go and I guarantee you, you're gonna be like, Oh, I wish I was there. It happens every year. So, um, you know, use that excitement. And even if you're, um, you know, you're not going, use it as like, like, I, like I look at the success club prizes every month. And even if I wasn't going to summit, like I push Noel, I'm like, okay, Noel, to get to this party, you need to get 10 success club points this month. And so you, she works her butt off, even though she's not going because it's like a mental push. And I have to constantly give myself those things. And maybe I need to talk about it a little bit more in the team pages because I'm just prize driven and recognition driven. And it just kind of pushes you to work towards something. It's not just like you're floating out in la-la land. But I really think it's just like visualizing, okay, I'm going to be there no matter what. I want this no matter what. And I'm going to do it no matter what, no matter what excuses come in my way. Um, something that I was... Tara and I sat down with her and her boyfriend last night and I was telling her, I'm like, why don't you get a dry erase board and tally off your power hour? Like how many people you friend request form follow up and invite each day and put it by your bed so that, um, Will can check and like ask you at the end of the day, okay, like who did you talk to or like, what did you do? And he can call her out on her bullshit and say, you didn't invite today. We're not going to sleep. And so you invite, like, who are you talking to? How can we invite them? And so I don't know if your fiance may be good at doing that or you would want to do that, but that's just something I'm kind of throwing out there as an idea since a lot of you guys have spouses and that's a great way to make them feel like they're part of the business, but also give you a kick in the butt to say, okay, you wanted this. You don't want to pay for your Shakeology. You want to help more people. So why aren't you doing this invite today? You know what I mean? Um, so that's just an idea. Obviously it can't, maybe it can't happen until when you're in Charlotte, but might be a good way to kind of just like have somebody kick you in the butt every day. I wish I had it. Honestly, some days I'm like, I don't want to do this. So I call Noel and I'm like, all right, if I don't talk to you by six and tell you I did my power hour, you need to call me out on it. And she will. So, um, but yeah, anything else I can kind of help with? Nothing. I mean, not not right now. Was that helpful? Yes, very much so. Okay. Well, I appreciate you getting on the team call. I thought I was going to get on here and it was going to be no one but me. Um, so it shows volumes that you hopped on despite all the things going on in your life. And I appreciate that. And I know that everything is busy right now, but just do what you can do. And just put yourself out there. And I want to see that live video this week because you can totally do it. Well, I'm going to be at big convention. So it's like perfect timing because you're going to be traveling. I'm gone for 10 days. So you know what's going to go in the bag. Yep. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. Okay. Well, um, yeah, maybe once you move, let's connect and we'll get you back in the group. Definitely. And if I find out I'm not moving, I'll definitely be back in the group. Yes. You've got to find that job. <laughs> you will good vibes your way all right thank you so much all right well i'm gonna stop recording